June the 1st, 2020. Guys, we now have Tropical Depression number three as this storm has moved off the Yucatan Peninsula into the Bay of Campeche. Much warmer water, some of the warmest water in the Gulf of Mexico is right where this thing is going. Now, what's unusual about it, and it reminds me last year of Hurricane Dorian. Remember 185 mile per hour sustained winds and it set over the uh, Bahamas for almost two or three days. Remember that? This thing is going to do something very similar, except it's going to be over a hot water. Now, what they're saying, you've got uh, tropical storm warnings already for this coast of Mexico that uh, envelops the Bay of Campeche here all along there. We'll look at those warnings. Now, I'm going to say this. This will be tropical storm crystal ball probably this afternoon. Again, C-R-I-S-T-O-B-A-L. We've had one of those before in that, in that name, but it reminds me of Dorian, and I'll say why. Remember, Dorian is the one that set over uh, the Bahamas for a couple of days last year at 185 mile per hour sustained winds, and it just stopped there. It was almost as if it was controlled. We mentioned that then. This storm also has me concerned about that very subject. It is now again going into the Bay of Campeche. You got your tropical storm warnings up, but it's going to sit there and just churn. And that's very unusual, guys. I've been watching hurricanes longer than most of you have been alive. Not all of you, but for, for since 1964. That's the first one I remember. I was in the fourth grade down in around Buras, Louisiana. And um, we had a bad hurricane. It came through New Orleans, wrecked all the, I think it was, uh, Betsy. Anyway, guys, it wrecked New Orleans. That's why there's just a few trolley cars there that you see now. There used to be a whole fleet of them, and it, then it uh, broke the levee down where we were at on the Mississippi River, again, around the poor, uh, Buras area. So this storm, I'm going to go ahead and just say it. The National Hurricane Center hasn't said it. I think it's going to be a major hurricane, and there's going to be major problems. I just want you to focus for a moment on the size of the storm that's in the bottom of this picture. Then, as you do that, look at the size of the states, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and the Florida Panhandle in Texas there. Guys, this thing is huge. And you can see the rotation as it comes offshore. And what you're seeing, again, is going from night in the red to daylight. Your highest clouds are in the orange and yellows. The rotation's right there. So now it has very little to prohibit its development at all. Again, some of the warmest waters in the Gulf. Let's take a look at the National Hurricane Center. Now, as you can see here also, the majority of this system is offshore. Sustained winds, 30 miles an hour. Minimum center pressure, 107 millibars. It is moving north or west-northwest at 7 miles per hour. It's amazing to see the forecast on this, but we'll take a look at it. But remember this central pressure of 1,007 millibars. That is not that bad, but this thing could get much worse. Again, this is the part that's kind of amazing to me. Now, we're 4 p.m. Monday. It storms just offshore in the X. It is a tropical depression. It will remain a depression for a few more hours, and then it becomes a tropical storm for one, two, three, four days. See that? Actually, five days, because by 1 p.m. Saturday, it's projected to be here in the central Gulf of Mexico as a tropical storm. We'll be very lucky if that thing is still a storm by Saturday. Today is Monday. I wouldn't doubt by Tuesday afternoon, tomorrow, we're starting to see a very strong tropical storm leading up to quickly becoming a hurricane. This blue line along the southern edge of the Bay of Campeche, again, is tropical storm warnings. But it's amazing. Again, Monday, we're here. Tuesday, Wednesday, is just dropping down and lingering along the coast, just sitting there the way Dorian did. And then it expands and moves off to the northeast. Now, this area in white is not the size of the storm. That's the, where the paths could be. In other words... The center of the storm could be anywhere from this side of this white uh, section to this side. But the, the models, and that's what the National Hurricane Center does a lot, is kind of average all the models. I'm going to show you a couple of other things here. 
Now, just a few minutes ago, about 13 minutes ago, this report came out, and uh, you've got the Navy model coming in to the center of Louisiana, and you've got the um, CMC or the Canadian model coming up the Mississippi River. Now, what's, um, and we're going to look at some of the models themselves because it looks like we're either going to take a hit in Louisiana or into Mississippi, according to the top two models that we're seeing. The um, timing on this, again, will be going into Saturday with it in the middle of the Gulf. By the 7th, you're going to uh, start seeing effects on shore. Now, looking at the Canadian model, the storm reminds me of the of where it's going to impact land uh, to Katrina, guys, all my friends in New Orleans. And it we were hit hard in Mississippi, guys. I was 120 miles inland. We had over 100-mile-an-hour winds, and we were without power or water for 14 days. So it's not anything to play with, but this one comes up, sets out there in the Bay of Campeche by the 6th, and then going into the 7th. It comes in, and it look it skirts the tip of the Mississippi River, slams into the Mississippi Gulf Coast, and I'll stop this. We'll come up again. There's the 5th, the 6th is moving out here. Notice where it's at on the mouth of the Mississippi River. Next frame, slamming into the coast of Mississippi from Mobile over into the New Orleans area. Moves up by the 8th. It's already slowing back down because it's on land and it's moving out to the north and west. Now, let's look at the Navy model. Here, the path of the storm is slightly to the west. In other words, more into central Louisiana. But I want you to notice the pressure in millibars here. You're in the green, and that again, this is tomorrow, and you're looking around uh, 1,000, uh, five to a thousand we're one oh uh, or a thousand seven millibars is what we're at now and as you go lower in pressure the stronger the storm is so when you get down in the dark blue and the purple below 980 this thing has gotten very powerful i'm going to step it forward and i want you to watch what the navy model does here again we're on the second moving up to the third the fourth the fifth it's starting to strengthen notice that by the 6th, it's going to start pulling out right there. Now you're getting lower in pressure, 984 in that area. What what's, what's, what happens here on the 6th? Right here, we go, going into the 7th, according to the Navy model, we're below 980 millibars in pressure. See that purple dot right there? And let me continue to step this forward. That area increases in strength. You've got a, another low pressure in there, so we're going to be possibly one of the strongest storms that we've seen in a while we're going to be at that at that strength and it continues that notice how large now this low pressure or very low pressure area is that's the seventh it's coming ashore probably like charles area still very high or very low pressure very high winds and uh, comes ashore right there still below 980 millibars that is what makes these things dangerous. Let me play it, the whole thing through uh, just one time so you can check it out. Then this one moves northwest and then cuts east. But we'll play the whole thing through. Setting in the Bay of Campeche. Moving up strengthens and bam. Lake Charles in that area uh, is where this thing is showing coming up shore. Now we know from experience this model will shift a little left to the right. A lot of times as they get closer to the shore in the Gulf of Mexico they will make a turn right just the way that the storm is rotating and as the outer bands interact with land you can see just like a saw blade it's going to pull it to the right so what we're going to be doing is keeping a very close eye on this guys uh if i'm wrong i'm wrong and uh i will admit it with if the storm fizzles out but i don't think it is and i'm going to issue a major storm warning okay for the uh northern gulf states texas all the way to florida keep an eye on this this could become major now this is the first we're talking about coming ashore around the seventh so you've got a week to prepare remember what i said about katrina two weeks no power and no water that meant all the stores walmarts and everywhere you could get food or gas you couldn't do it because they couldn't run their cash registers you couldn't you, we had to go out of state in some cases to get gasoline and food 
So be prepared for that, guys. This thing's going to get intense. We're watching it. I want you to watch it, uh, and uh, I will update this thing several times between now and the time it comes ashore. It's a heads up, guys. Be safe.